When the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 12K was announced, I thought it was laughable, but I still bought it. Reflecting back on that decision now, the 12K Ump has changed the way I film, plan and create content. It's easily one of the best cinema cameras that I've ever owned, so why did I sell it? But more importantly, what camera did I replace it with? Well, let's rewind a bit. Similar to Grant Petty, I hail from a small town. When I ventured into filmmaking, there was minimal studio facilities and only two rental houses. Both required referrals. At this time, nothing, and I mean nothing, was shot on video. It was all film. The scarcity of paid film work meant to make my dream become a reality, I had to juggle three jobs, I worked every scrap of overtime available, until I finally saved up enough money to fly to the States and purchase my first cinema camera. I bought a used Araflex BL2 35mm sync sound motion picture camera. It shoots three and four perf between four and 10 minutes per 400 foot mag and up to 100 frames per second in full gait. It's the same camera that Stanley Kubrick used for most of his career and it cost me a boatload of money at the time. It paid itself off swiftly since it was the only Sync 35mm sound camera in my state. I had a monopoly and it changed my career path. I went from struggling to get paid to fully paid on every job as all the DPs in the area wanted future rental favours. And I was happy to oblige until one DP borrowed it and killed the camera. I sent the camera back to Ari in Munich who confirmed the damage and cause, issued me a repair quote and asked me what I wanted to do. This is where the lesson is learned because I had to make the wrong choice back in 2007 to have the understanding that I have today. If you remember at that time, there was a small company that made some bold announcements and started taking pre-orders for a camera that sounded like pure vapeware. And that company was Red Digital Cinema and the camera was the Red One, which would go on to change the entire film industry. We're building a cinematography tool, a high-end cinematography tool that, that distills down really nicely into the broadcast world, into even people that want to shoot corporate work and, and you name it. I mean, we're building a tool that is affordable for something that's really next generation. This is a 4K digital cinema camera with a list price of $17,500. At the time, Red was asking less for the Red One than my ARRI camera repair, which I naively, naively chose to repair and it never got rented again. The new tech just swept through my town, it killed all film production, and everything went digital overnight, and that was that. And the lesson I learned was that there will always be something better and cheaper just around the corner. So when the Aria Lexus started to ship, did I buy one? No, I rented it. There was no way I was going to get locked into another $100,000 camera purchase where the ROI is just much lower. As an owner operator, I chose to spend less than 5K on cameras like the Canon 5D Mark II and then moved swiftly to cheaper options from Blackmagic Design when they launched. Since then, I've worked on millions of dollars worth of projects and made money hand over fist from shooting with cameras like these. So when people ask me, do I regret buying the Ursa cameras? Of course not. They're in my top five best investments I've ever made for my business. Now we can argue on and on and on and on and on all day about which camera is better, but I'm pretty sure that everyone will agree that the camera that has dominated over the last 10 to 15 years is the Ari Alexa in its various forms. And yes, for the past few months, I've been looking for one on the used market, but a part of me feels like I'm just getting sucked back into overpaying for another camera. But here's the rub, after a long search, and even though one of my most seen films with over 45 million views was shot on one, I am not buying an ARRI of any kind at all and I never will again, and here's why. Currently the market is flooded with amazing cameras like the Fujifilm X-H2S, Sony FX3, Panasonic S5 Mark II, any of the Z cams and the Red Komodo, and I forgot about Canon. These cameras are just getting smaller, more powerful and cheaper, and they don't cost 25K like the new hype camera, the Sony Barano. But I'm also a showrunner with my own budgets, so I'm not bound to what other producers want me to have to be employed. 90% of what I shoot is 24, 25 and 30 piece sync sound video. And that means that any camera in the right hands from the last decade will do. And in my search, I just kept coming across this one camera. It blew my mind when it was released and can still be used as an A-cam today. Now, knowing that I've sold my Ursa Mini Pro 12K for this camera, many of you will just think I've, I've just lost my mind. 
but I haven't. And the first production I put it on, it was rented for 10 times what I paid for it. Plus, I got almost all of what I'd spent on the Ump 12K back before it was superseded. Can you guess what the camera is? If you can, pause the video right now, drop a comment of what you think it is below and whether you were right at the end of the video. While you're thinking, here's some footage shot with the camera intercut with the Ursa 12K. See if you can pick which camera is which. I'll eliminate one brand for you. It's not a Sony. Like the camera I sold, this camera is not an all-rounder. It just shoots fantastic A-roll. It's great for studio and mobile work, has excellent build quality, can run all day on a single battery, is great for vertical content, shoots internal raw, has amazing color science, uses cheap media, and most importantly, doesn't create a lot of data like the 12K Pro. So the camera I sold my Ursa 12K for is the Blackmagic Design Production 4K with a global shutter, which I picked up for next to nothing. The remaining $6,500 from the ump sale went back into my pocket. And I chose this camera because it is all that I need to meet most of my client demands. I just couldn't see the point of keeping a camera anymore where 90% of its features are rarely being used. This is where a lot of people get lost in their camera purchase. They just get sucked into the hype or they're suffering from FOMO because the camera's fashionable or they believe it's going to get them work. But that's simply not true. In today's market, it's harder to have that niche camera that can help you monopolize your space like my BL2 did for me back in the day. And the better way to make yourself stand out is to invest in projects for your showreel rather than to buy another expensive camera. The best thing is you don't even need to buy a cheap camera to do this. You can rent any camera you need from any local camera hire outlet. And you'll probably find most of them are willing to help you get your passion project made for free as they understand that these projects will help you get paid work, which in turn, if you're a decent human being, will end up back at their door as a paid rental. And there you have it. They're my reasons for selling my Ursa Mini Pro 12K and why I'm choosing to replace it with an older Blackmagic camera. I'll have another video outlining how I'm finding these cameras so cheap because if I can help you find a cheap camera like this one, that would be amazing. And if you're interested in the OG cinema camera, I'm sure you'll like this video right here. Swipe up, tag your friends, like and subscribe, comment below. If I make this follow, don't let this flop, wait till the end.